Hello humans, this is Ranavis Sarge and welcome to the Random Channel. Today we're going to be continue playing Medieval Fantasy Rogue's Choice. This is Chapter 10's Best Choices. There will be a link in the description to the walkthrough that I am looking at uh, for this. So let's go and see what the best choices are and where we fucked up. Okay, so the first choice we went up the grand stair, we got blocked by the guards and we turned around. Uh, the most morale we can get out of this situation would be to talk to the dwarves first of all. The dwarves know me, you think? At least Thalmar and Ahorim did. Ahorim do. You bought them a drink and they ought to count for something. They might even remember Kriya from the tavern. Thalmar opens his eyes wide as you approach. Well, I must say, I would have wagered my last coal ingot against ever seeing you in here. Ahorim spits out some of his beard, dripping it down his own beard. Only a night or two ago, you were buying advice from the city you have never been to. My, you climb high swiftly, lad, says Thalmar. You give the best advice, says Ahorim. You smile as you get in close, hoping that the short distance will discourage any more shouting from the dwarves. As much as you are enjoying the reception, you don't want the whole castle to know you have no business here. Several other dwarves from their party gather around, perhaps curious about this human that Thalmer, Thalmer and Horam know. Well, well, us humans do not live long, so we must learn fast, you say. And on that score, I thought a pair of clever dwarves such as yourself could help me find someone. Sure, but you you're going to have a you have to buy us a drink first, says Thalmer, his eyes twinkling. Ha! shouts Horam. Never mind, the drinks are free, says Thalmer. The only reason we're here, says Horam. Um who do you want to find? I like these guys. They're kinda no they're, they're mildly rude, but you know, it's uh, it it comes with dwarves, you know. The rudeness comes with dwarves, and it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing in their case. Who do you want to find? asked Thalmer. That's just it. Uh, would they have seen Kriya as herself or as the Dark Elf? A disguise probably fell when yours did. But what these, what these dwarves may have seen, depending on timing, in any case, you should probably keep the, uh, this interaction short. You stand out enough with your uh, weather-beaten clothes. Being the only human talking with these dwarves isn't keeping helping you keep a low profile. Okay, so the the next choice we'll get the uh, the morale from is have you seen Kriya? Because uh, our disguise got down fairly fast, so I'm hoping she her disguise came down as well. So they must have seen her as Kriya. Have you seen Kriya? Uh, you ask. You're about to give a more elaborate description, but it's clear they immediately know who you're talking about. The suicidal witch, says Thalmer. He laughs. Did she lure you into one of her fool quests? Yes, yeah, she did. She uh, actually, uh, you know what? I should have taken both of your advice. They're very wise elf, uh, dwarves, I gotta say. Like, honestly, if I knew them, I would probably buy them fucking drinks next time I see them out in the open. Because holy shit. If I would have taken their advice, my life would have been so much easier. Or over. You know, either one would have been better than the shit that I am dealing with at the moment. But regardless, you notice that the other dwarves have gone back to drinking. Only Thalmer and Horam are still paying attention to this conversation. That's just as well. You don't need anyone knowing your business. You shrug. I suppose you could say that. Hey, says Thalmer, putting out his hands to Horam. Horam grumbles, digs in his pocket and slaps a coin in Thalmer's hand. Oh, they set up a bet. Thalmer smiles at you. You made me a gold coin, boy. When I saw you talking to her, I wager with Horam you'd join her. You let me down, says Horam. Waved, <laughs> waved her hips at you, eh? Honestly, that that's pretty that's pretty much it. Yes, well, apologies to you, Horam, but I need to find Kriya and her hips quickly. <laughs> Our character just does not go down on the fucking humor. I like that, I like them, despite the, how fucked the situation tend to get tends to get. Have you seen her? Thalmer shrugs. In this crowd, you all look the same. I only recognize you because you charge at us like a crazed cockatrice. Ha! Says Thoram, humans are always so desperate. Very well, you save the sigh. Have you seen the Duke's wizard, Kalak? Thalmer's eyes widen. I have a new wager, Thoram. <laughs> he says, keeping his eyes fixed on you. This boy won't live to see the next moon. I won't take it this time, says Thoram. I've lost. He has lost me enough already. I like these dwarves, says Egra. Maybe you should hand me over to one of them. They do seem to be enjoying this, and for some reason, so are you. Having some reminder of events before all the madness took place is comforting. That is true, that is true. The, these guys uh, are sort of a, a safe place to some extent for me, com compared to how fucked everything else tends to get around me. Uh, in, answer to, in answer to your question, says Thalma, the last I saw him, he came down from those stairs and walked through the hall, parting the dance floor like a... Hungry purple worm pushing down soft earth, pushing through soft earth. Okay. 
That is an absurd thing to say. Parting the dance floor like a hung hungry purple worm pushing through soft uh, soft earth. Oh, he went on uh, the Kalak or she, I suppose. Now that we know, she went on the dance floor, and everyone was just like, "Oh fuck this!" And everyone just moved out of her way. I'm guessing. Um, don't know where he went. Don't care to know," says Horam. Thalma nods as though confirming Horam's view on the matter. He then looks past you. Maybe the skinny one in the green dress knows something. He's, she has been staring at you like a lamb chop. Oh, Anne. Uh, you turn to see an attractive woman swaying at the music, staring at you. Instinctively, you smile back at her. She smiles back and then averts her eyes. That one, says Egra in your mind. I like that one. Go dance with her. Oh, this. Oh, on this, you agree with the godling. Excuse me, good wolves, you say with a bow. You then turn and quickly walk towards the woman. Like a crazed cockatrice comes Horam's voice from behind. If you do not ravish this woman, I will find a new champion who will, says Egra playfully. Now go and show me why you are my champion. You certainly don't need a godling in your head to tell you to approach a beautiful woman that has taken notice of you. Alright, now we know everything else this should be the same, right? The woman gasps when, you, uh, gasps when she turns to see you standing so near. You smile and she returns it, she returns it a genuine smile. May I? You say, motioning for a dance. She nods. You wrap one hand around her back and then uh, take her Take her hand with the, with the other. Uh, the woman laughs and follows your lead as you whisk her out into the swirling ground. Yes, this much uh, is it. I think uh, next up uh, after this, uh, we are just going to be reading the same thing as far as I can tell. Yes, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Moving on with the choices, I suppose. This was the correct choice. It's the man underneath the clothes that matter. I, got, I think I got an achievement for this and you get the morale. This was the correct choice. Just say that you noticed earlier. This was also the correct choice. Three correct choices in a row. Damn. Uh, it, would my, it would be my pleasure to be your friend. This was the correct choice. As I guessed, uh, retreat was the correct option. If I stay here, I'll just lose life or all of my life if I make the wrong cho choice. To retreat, the most reasonable option that I selected, which I got an achievement reasonable as well for. That was the correct option. Apparently... This was a weird, this is a weird option. I, I chose sing to her, which just didn't really do nothing for me. It was just like, okay, if I do attempt to track her, is this going to be the same thing? In the sing to her option, she got a little mad because I made a scene. Attempt to track her, I will just probably find her. But apparently disguise yourself gives us some interesting choices to say the least. I don't know if this is good or bad, but it seems like these are interesting choices. So I might as well. So let's disguise ourselves. Egra, I shall take on the disguise as another to draw her out. Cloak me in a, in a simple illusion, you say. So my champion wishes to immediately cheat at the hiding game, says Egra amused. There is no time for an honest game. A, a priestess of Thog is on the loose. I must give Anne my seed and then be on my way. What a lucky girl she is. Be sure to give Anne those same words when you find her, Egra laughs. Very well, what sort of disguise do you have in mind? Uncertain of who Anne knows within the castle, a few ideas come to mind. So apparently the best choice here would be, the most giving choice here would be to uh, go with the demon. Otherwise, uh, it just, 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 just doesn't work as mu as well, I think. So the demon, Azazel. Let's disguise her as a friend. Uh, disguise as the demon that called herself Azazel, you say. Um, a wonderful choice, says Egra. Cheat at the game and perhaps what uh, Anne knows, about, knows of the demon. The shimmering before your eyes as the illusion takes effect. Uh, am I not out in the open? Maybe, uh, yeah, I got to a corner, I think. I don't remember. Um, takes effect. Without a mirror handy, you have to trust that Egra have done what she claims. You saunter out into the garden, swaying your hips a, a little, but not too much. You don't want to overdo it. The boys are shoving each other, but one of them uh, stops this horse... Horseplay when he sees you. He smiles and stares, but only for a moment before his trace is broken by a punch in the shoulder by another of the trio. The punch boy, uh, the punched boy launches himself on his attacker, perhaps showing off for you. Soon all three of them are down in the grass, uh, vigorously wrestling. The couple looks over at you, the man a bit longer, but they do not break stride in their romantic stroll. You hurry towards the uh, long clump of trees. Take it along the far wall, and you hear a loud whisper as you come near. And I know you're in here, in there. Do not hide from me. Uh, it's only it takes it only takes a few seconds before a mulberry bush shakes and out steps Anne. Ida, how did you know I was here? Um, so apparently, I don't. I personally would not choose this option, but apparently, this is the best option. Is I'm a demon and I know many things. <laughs> Let's go with that. I'm a demon and I know many things. You say. Keeping your voice in a whisper. Perhaps you are, she smirks. Your voice is strange. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so, um, this was confirmed before, uh, but I now we have the perfect confirmation that she does not know that Anne is a demon. Or, I mean, uh, the other Azazel is a demon. 
and I'm just hoping that Azazel is uh, yeah, yeah they, they show it like Azazel is not that strong in this sh uh, in this uh, you know reading so I'm guessing that Azazel is not the same Azazel from uh, uh, Wizard's Choice because if she is her like holy shit she is very strong so whatever what can we do anyhow uh, where are we perhaps you are she smirks your voice is strange what sort of trickster, uh, trickster godling are you to not mask my voice you say to Egra only an illusion you said uh, says Egra, proper transformation costs more power, a proper champion makes do. Uh, looking back, you don't see the other garden dwellers. Uh, several statues close by, surrounded an apple tree, block your view of most of the garden. Anne chose her hiding place well. Based on Anne's reaction to your remark, you don't think she realizes th uh, that this friend of hers, who she calls Ida and you know as Azazel, is a demon. Walk past Anne and enter the thicket. Turning around, she's standing there, her eyebrows up. Drop the illusion, Egra, you say. Why? We are just getting started. Save your father's power and besides we haven't time for this game. A brief shimmering appears before you. Now Anne's mouth drops. Gods. She takes a step back. I found you. Uh, you say with your most roguish smile. That was the game we were playing, was it not? Oh man, this guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> you, you're a sorcerer? She asks. I know a few tricks, you say nonch nonchalantly. <laughs> But illusions are one of my lesser talents. You point to the trees behind you with your thumb. May I show you? She bites her lip. Is this the real you? Quickly you walk up to her. She takes a sharp breath yet holds her ground. Take my hand and find out. She pulls a vial out of her cleavage, uncocks it, tilts her head back and unends the bottle as though to drink. Not a drop comes out. Neville's tongue. She curses as she corks the bottle. You gently take her hand and put it on your chest. It's me, my heart. Oh damn. <laughs> Okay, this dialogue we did not unlock last time. Oh, by the way, this I never noticed. Uh, I never really paid attention. I always thought that this was vodka that she was drinking, but there was nothing in the bottle. I'm feeling that this might be like a, a contraceptive or something, but who knows? I'm not sure. Uh, you gently take her hand and put it on your chest. It's me, my heart. Uh, she stares at your chest for a moment, then looks up in your eyes. There's desire. You move her hand to around her waist and step in and run your... F yeah, you've already read all this. We read all this. Yep, 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 yep. We read all this. Okay, so the next one, I could actually, uh, you know, cast the spell, which will take away uh, more favor, and she would instantly get wet, apparently. Uh, that's what I'm picking up, as far as I can see. Um, but I could also just go the route I went down, which is as mercy to your champion, leave me to this. So this was the correct option. We're going to go down the same route again. Now we're going to change something here. This is the situation where we are hearing the boys coming in, right? And um, because of uh, the boys coming in, we decided to move on from foreplay, which is she's already soaked. So this time we're going to give her more foreplay. So let's uh, give her more foreplay. Let's see what uh, different stuff uh, we can, uh, we got a new dialogue we get, we get open. First, I shall pray at your altar. Oh, mother of God. Last time he said, I will enter your palace. Now he said, first I shall pray at your altar. You whisper to her as you move down from her breast with your mouth. You must like your answer because she shudders. No woman has ever chastised you, chastised you for taking too much time. Uh, the boys continue to shout and laugh. For a moment you're tempted to tell Anne to try to be quieter, but you do not want to ruin the mood. Hopefully the boys won't hear her moans over the sound of their horseplay. Working your kisses down her body, you stare at her pleasure garden. <laughs> And here you feast. It's not long before her moans are threatening to become screams. Not wanting to bring the entire castle running over to investigate, you slowly, you slow down, moving your tongue away from her uh, plumped pearl while keeping your fingers inside her. Yet more rubbing, yet now rubbing more slowly over over her pleasure spot. Give it, give me it. Uh, I thought you would say give it to me, but give me it. You begs from above. Her voice is a husky whisper, her legs spread wide. You heard the girl, says Egra, do what you what you, what you came here for, champion. If I do, will you shut up, you say to the goblin, go godling. Normally, you would tease your lover more, uh, bring her even closer to climax, but this really is not the place. Your mouth moves slowly up from her mound, kissing her lower abdomen, stomach, chest, neck, and finally her lips. Dreadly accept your tongue headless of where it has been only a few seconds before yeah women apparently just do not give a shit about that sort of thing like uh, guys would rather not kiss girls who are just uh, you know giving them head and stuff usually usually you press your stiff manhood flat against the swollen lips of her lower mouth she gaps gasps and tilts her pelvis up as they're trying to push you inside uh have you read this 
Lifting yourself up, you push, uh, push your tip down to aim and then lower yourself slowly, entering her slick tunnel easily all the way. She lets out something akin to squeal, then bites her lip and scratches your back. Okay, we have already read all this, I think. Yeah, yeah, we already read all this. Now, yeah, this is the one thing I wanted to check at the bottom of this. Last time I was getting confused when he came, but it's right here in the last past paragraph. Starting to breathe heavily from your exertion, you thrust even faster, grabbing Anne's shoulder to hold her in place as you finally bring yourself over the edge. edge. Anne, Anne, Anne. You gasp over and over with each thrust, pushing forth your seed. I missed this. I, I read this, but I didn't pay attention to it because I thought they would, uh, you know, uh, you know, graphically describe the fact that he came, but apparently not. And then this, these boys came in, so I just got a confused kind of there. Let's move on to the next choice. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I am happy that we actually got to do some cunnilingus this time. This is where she asked me if I'm scared or some shit to go and kill the priestess. So we chose it would be wise to have Kriya at our side which doesn't do anything for us but it is a decent option. The other one just reduces morale. The one option that will give us morale the best choice would be I would if you did not hide whenever we are near the priestess. Uh, so yeah we're gonna go with this one morale increases one i would face the priestess if you did not hide whenever you're near her you say she's a high priestess with her god on her side meanwhile what do i have i have an annoying and cowardly godling so what are you saying is that you're afraid says egra her tone is light but you sense something did you hurt her pride she deserves it what i'm saying is that i require some useful aid not an absent godling korea wants to put her trust in kalak to get that aid now she'll back her up and get my reward you say that is a decent option. We finally talk back to Egra. I, she's on my list, obviously. So uh, I'm quite happy with that. So this should be the... Yeah, it's, it's the same after that. So in this option, I can exchange two favor for two morale. Uh, ask Egra for help. That does appear to be the best option. That's the one we did last time. But this time, I'm going to convince Korea to try and use Haws. I would normally continue with Ask Egra for help because that way I can show off to Korea. But I would rather not do that this time around uh, because uh, these actions of yours, these small actions of yours, don't really affect the story all that much. Uh, but then again, I don't really know. Maybe they would. You know what? Let's just ask Egra for help. I think this is the best option. We did this last time. So if you want to. Obviously, listen to this one. Just go and listen to me whenever I play this. So this is the one where Centaur, uh, like the, uh, you know, Im illusion centaur or whatever it is, like a summon centaur decides to attack us, uh, which has been summoned by Kalak or his underling, I don't know. Uh, we decided to take cover with the fountain, which did not do anything else for us, but that was a good one. Uh, we are going to go with uh, tell Egra to use slippery spell because apparently that will reduce two favor but give us two morale which appears to be a decent option. I think I'm the, is, it, might, uh, it will also give me a little bit more to read. Let's go with this one. I, I don't think it's the best option. I still think take cover in the fountain is the best option. But I'm going to try uh, and uh, tell Egra to use slippery spell. Actually, that might be a bad one. I'm not sure. I, this, see, this is the problem. This one this one has like very much uh, lots of gray area in it. So I'm not sure which one I should pick because in the last one I did not want to ask Egra for help but I did not want to convince Kriya either so I thought just asking Egra for help would be better and this one you know what let's just take over from the fountain I think this is the best one because it doesn't reduce anything at least otherwise I'm just exchanging uh, you know favor for morale it's like two, two favor decreases two morale increases two life decreases two morale increases so it's just exchange so I better just uh, I'd rather just uh, you know take cover from the fountain this was the correct option, T tell Kalak about Iranova. This is the one we went with the worst option possible to deceive the Duke because I thought the Duke might be like sexist or something and that's why Kalak is hiding her identity because she did not does not want the Duke to be like oh it's a woman but they used that same logic but they went with people instead of the Duke so we're gonna go with that one to deceive the people why do you uh, she, she's asking why does she take up a disguise to deceive the people receive the people you say you do not think the uh, you do not think the people will respect a woman what a clever bird you are Kalek cla claps her hand and smiles duke's witch just does not have the same ring as the duke's wizard does it ring to it you think uh, perhaps you look confused because she waves at you and says never mind that expression she says sometimes i forget what world i am in whoa ho 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 we actually got some interesting shit to it Duke's witch just does not have the same ring to it as the Duke's wizard does it. That's a simple thing. And ring to it, we think that for some reason I'm for some reason I'm confused about that. 
Um, never mind that expression you say. Sometimes I forget what world I'm in. Is this like an earth coat or something? Uh, yeah, I feel I think Kalak might not be, uh, a, you know, a person who lives in this world. That is some vital information we did not get with the other option. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. So she might be someone from another world. She, I'm not saying she's a god or anything, but she might not be someone who was born in this world. Interesting. Interesting. This was the correct option. Cup the statue's breast. Uh, this was the correct option. We could have gone with the Alethian priest. We could have gone with the dwarves. Both of them give the same amount of morale. So we'll just go, go, we'll go with the dwarves again. You know what? Actually, we already got the, uh, you know, reading from the dwarves. So I'm just going to go with the Alethian priest just to get some new text. And I don't think this would affect the story in the long run. I don't think any of my choices affect the story in the long run. But I just don't want to take the chance if there's like some secret hidden background thing that like uh, slowly collects data or some shit like that. Um, they're considering they do collect data, so I'm 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 just worried that they might like later be like, oh, you it made this choice in the second chapter, and because of that, you're going to die now, <laughs> or some shit like that. We go to the Lathian priest, you say. As Kalak said, you have already mixed in with the gods. Best we choose a side. Kriya nods. This is there is wisdom in this. Certainly, the Elathians hate Thog, and they know the ways of Thog, you say. And as their god is good, they may grant us audience despite our bed clothing, says Kriya. Uh, when we are near the priest, do not expect help from me, uh, says Egra. I never count on it, you say. Go hide and give me peace. And this is the last choice of the this chapter, which I chose submit, because of which I lost three life, because Egra decided to fuck me over and bash my head into something, and that the uh, Alethian priest decided to fire at me. Um, run for the temple, still going to be a problem. I think the best one is make an excuse and try to go on your own. We're gonna do that. I think that's the best option. You put up your hands and take a step back from Avis, my lady. Although it is humiliating to say, I'm afraid of such an invasive probing. I'm not one of the Alethea's faithful. It matters not, says Avis. Uh, Alethea sees the truth in all men, even the unfaithful. What difference does it make, says Kriya. If you speak the truth, you have nothing to fear. Perhaps better to wait until after the ceremony, you say, beginning to walk. Away in the direction of the Great Hall. The Thogian will not dare carry out her evil schemes in the presence of, her, of your priest friends. I'm not so sure, sure, about, sure of that, says Kriya, following after you. Unfortunately, I must insist, uh, says Avis. If what you say is true, we shall risk the interruption. Yet first, I must be sure. You speed up your walk. You're now in the Great Hall. Halt, shouts Avis. You run. Halts, comes Avis, Avis's voice again. Fainter, thanks to you now being around the corner. Nevertheless, this time, her command carries more weight to you. Your legs wobble and you stumble. Fortunately, the effect is fleeting and you keep your footing. Command spell, you think. You know that one. Egra, you say, come out, protect me from the Alet from Alethea. There is stirring inside you. The godling have has been hiding deep. It may take her a little time to bubble up. You focus on running faster. Speed is not something speed is not something you need Egra for. Growing up as a thief on the streets of the Windborn. Windborn, that's interesting. Uh, you have always known how to run. Rooster shouts Kriya, looking back, you see her running after you with Avis. Uh, further down, now uh, rounding the corner of the side hall. Soon you lose sight of them as you sprint past a large pair of statues. Stop him, uh, comes Avis's voice. Stop the runner. A knight who is walking ahead turns, stares at you, then clicks, and then cl clinks towards you in his plate, plate mail. Okay, I, last time we did the somersault as well, uh, but last time we did not. Uh, last time we were in Egra's control, I think. Anyhow. The somersault just sounds weird. I don't know why it, it, the memory of like a 70s action movie or something comes in my mind whenever I hear of this somersault he did over the fucking guard. Um, yeah, we already read all this. It's the same. My father wits a fight, fight this time. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Morale. Look at the fucking morale. I got 20 morale. Holy shit. Uh, now, what is the favor for? Right, right, right. The favor decreases because we use the magic to unlock the doors. I thought the favor was for uh, protecting us against the command spell, but apparently not. Let's look at the stats. On chapter re uh, replays, you get the option to see what choice. Yeah, yeah, we already saw all this. I don't know why it keeps telling me that. Yeah, we did get 650. I was wondering I might not get the top most rank, but I did 715. I think I could have gotten more if I went with something else. Because morale is... No, morale is the most powerful one. Holy shit, morale is got 30 multipliers. So I think it's best to focus on getting as much morale as possible, even if you lose favor. So I think this is the best one. Yeah, all right. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. We'll see. I'll see you in the next chapter, chapter 11. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, share the video, by the way. I know someone's watching, but 
just share the goddamn video all right I'm, I'm i don't personally just go out like spam my link in every goddamn direction all right no one knows about this channel it's very underlying so i would prefer if someone would share this <laughs> thank you anyway so much for watching bye, -bye.